put upon a heart. Jonah chapter number 1. We all know the story. A very, very familiar passage of Scripture. But I want you to look at verse number 15. Verse number 15. Jonah chapter 1. And verse number 15. If you got it, say amen. amen. Verse number 15 says, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from a raging. Let's read that one more time. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from a raging. With God's help this morning, I want to preach on this. How to get rid of Jonah. Or we could say getting rid of Jonah. Our Father, we love you this morning. And God, we are very careful to give you all the praise and glory and honor. You are a mighty good God. God, you are such a good God. Even on our worst of days, you're still good. Lord, I pray you'll help us this morning. God, you know my heart. Lord, I didn't come. Now, Lord, I didn't even have to preach. I've, I've, I've enjoyed myself this weekend. Lord, all these men of God, Lord, have knocked it out of the park. And God, I pray you'll help us here for a little while. Lord, you spoke directly to my heart yesterday with this thought. And Lord, I don't know who it's for, but God, it's for somebody. God, I pray, Lord, we'll be obedient today. And Father, anything that gets accomplished, Lord, it'll be 0% man. Help God, help Dad today, Father. Bless him and touch him and strengthen him. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Amen. One man said this, I, my dad has got me addicted to quotes. If you ever get his Bible, man, the first 12 pages of his Bible's quotes. Uh, Warren Wiersbe said this, Jonah saw God's will as punishment. Jesus saw God's will as nourishment. Spurgeon said this, when your will is God's will, you will have your will. Jonah is in a spot in his life where he's in trouble. Jonah, we find there in verse number 1 and 2, he got a word from God. Verse number 1 and 2 says, Now the word of the Lord came unto the Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. I wrote this down just yesterday. The will of God will never go contrary to the word of God. Say, preacher, I'm praying about something. That's Brother Doug told me that the other week. And man, I started digging. God gave me a word, Matthew 9, 29. Man, settled it in my heart. The, the will of God will never go contrary to this word of God. I don't have to call my dad today and say, Dad, what's the will of God for my life? The, Brother Donald, the will of God's find, found right here in the word of God. Most people don't find the will of God because they're not willing to get in the word of God. Brother Doug told me that. He said, man, you're not going to find the answer to the will of God outside of the Word of God. So many young people are in, in, in dismay, don't know what to do with their life. i tell you what the answer is. It's get in the Word of God. It's get closer to God. You say, Jeff, that book's boring. This book ain't boring. Man, this thing's more alive than Facebook. Somebody help me right there. There's, there's so much power in this thing. There's so much excitement in it. It's almost like watching a movie. Man, these things coming out. And I'm thankful for the Word of God. Romans 10, verse number 17. So then, faith cometh by him hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you say, preacher, how do I give faith this morning? I tell you how you're going to have faith. It's by the word of God. Uh, Hebrews 4 verse number 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing center of soul and spirit. Now the joints of marrow is not a cerner of the faults and intents of the heart. Psalms 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. May I say this this morning, I'm glad for the word of God. I'm, I'm glad when God left, I'm glad he didn't leave us empty handed. I'm, I'm thankful on the days I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to do. I can't talk to nobody, Brother Wheeler. I'm glad I can get in the Word of God. I'm glad the Word of God never gets old. The Word of God never runs out of date. The Word of God is always there. I'm glad it's powerful on those bad days. I'm glad it's got a good Word. I'm glad on the worst days of life, I'm glad the Word of God is there for me to dig into. One Oswald Chambers said this, are you learning to say the things after listening to God 
Or are you saying things and trying to make God's word fit in? A lot of people like to twist and turn the word of God. But I don't care how much you twist and turn it. There's a word up in heaven. I believe the Holy Bible's up there. And you can twist it and make it fit your life if you want to. But I'll tell you this. There's only one word. And there's only one word. And that is the word of God. Isaiah 28 verse number 23 says. Give your ear and hear my voice. Hearken and hear my my speech Luke 11 verse number 28 but he said yea rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it yes, yes. on those Wednesday nights being a youth pastor for about three years man I preach to those kids like I do right here man they'd, they'd be 70 80 teenagers up there and I preach till I'm blue in the face and Miss Kathy, the bad thing about that, I knew that no matter how hard I preached, how much God gave me a word, there's going to be some that have those invisible earmuffs on. I tell them little girls, girls, y'all need to stay out of the, the dark spots with them boys. Somebody help me right there. So girls, watch out where you go. Watch who you hang around. And they're staring at me. I know deep down inside they had this invisible. They didn't give a rip. And they didn't, but it's amazing to me, Brother Weaver, that when people mess their life up, they don't go back to the doctor. They, you know where they come? They come back to church. You know why? Because of the word of God and how powerful it is. Jonah had a word. Not only did Jonah have a word, but Jonah had a will. Look there in verse number three, first little part. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. May I say this, ladies and gentlemen, Jonah had two options, two options. God said, Jonah, I need you to go there and preach. Jonah had option A was the will of God. Option B, Brother Wheeler, was option B was Jonah's will. Can I say this? In life, it is either God's will or our will. One thing I'm learning very fast, Brother Sidney, is I'd rather do God's will than my will any day. Yeah. I was sitting there talking to my brother-in-law yesterday, just talking to him. Boy, the Holy Ghost showed me this, talking about the hand of God. I'd rather have God's hand on it than mine in it. Somebody say amen. amen. I'd rather have the touch of God and the power of God than what I've been feeling this weekend. I'd rather serve God in, in the worst case scenarios than my will in the best of days. Yeah. But you know what? Jonah didn't want that. Jonah thought his will was better than God's will. Yeah. Maybe you're contemplating, you're, you got yourself in a mess. How many's ever been a mess because you, man, you've done something wrong? I'll never forget my dad saying, man, he bought a minivan. My mom was in the hospital with us, and dad wanted a minivan. Preacher, he went down and got him a minivan. I, I don't remember it because I was still trying to be born. Say amen. And dad said he went down there and got a Chevy Astro minivan. Said he pulled up to the hospital, man. That thing was big and beautiful, enough for three children. Say, hey, man, man, he gonna pack that thing out. Dad said, man, that's what he wanted. So he went and done it. Didn't pray about it. Just went and got it. A few months later, that van has caused so much trouble. Brother Ellis, he had to turn it in. And Dad said from then, man, he had an old yellow puke looking car. Man, the cloth was hanging off. Dad said, I think Brother Mike Goodson said it, man, Dad would roll up in church and people would knew, man, something was wrong with that car. Dad said it used more oil than it did gas. Hey, amen. And that day's had to be a blessing. Say hey, amen. Yeah. Dad said, man, he rolled up in there like the clippets. And you know what dad would say? He said, I did that. God had to punish me because I done my will and not God's will. I'm scared today so many people of God are suffering because they think their will is better than God's will. Can I, can I say this about Mary and Miss Taylor? It was the perfect will of God for me and her to get together. It took me a little long. Say amen, Taylor. It took me a little while. But I finally woke up, bless God, and said, hey, I want that girl. And God wants me to have her. And can I say this? It is a necessity in my life. Brother Doug, we talked to him. He married us. He said, man, y'all two got to love each other. Man, you got to realize he's a minister. I've been watching God work through her. And her preacher come over there the other day just bragging home, man, how much she loves God and how much she loves me. I, but I also seen the opposite effect where the boy thought he knew better 
better than God. And the boy looked at the looks instead of the heart. Somebody help me right there. The girl looked at the looks. Can I say this? Looks only last a little while. But that girl right there, she has a big old heart for God. She wants to serve God with me. Honey, I'd rather have that than all the money in the world. I'd rather have somebody that wants to serve God and give them everything I've got. I'm glad I didn't mess my life up because I thought I knew what I wanted. I'm glad the will of God come in my life. I'm glad I'm serving God, doing the will of God. And I'm right in the center of God's will with who I'm supposed to be with. Say, preacher, how do I find my right spouse? Preacher, how do I find that hunk of a man? When I was in when I was in men I was teenagers, man, I drew a big old triangle on the whiteboard one day. I blue drew a big old triangle. They're all looking at me weird like we about to do geometry. We didn't we didn't do that because I failed that. Say amen. I don't even know what that word even means. Say amen. And man, that triangle, Brother Jordan, it has it has God up top. I put the man right here and the woman man right here. Now I said, here's what happens. This, if this man goes after this woman and starts going toward each other, they get farther away from God. I say, this young man, if you're chasing that woman instead of chasing God, you're out of the will of God. I can say that stuff now I'm married say amen I was a kid I hate hearing that stuff that stuff made me mad you know why I was with the wrong person but you this girl instead of loving God she wants to love that man more than she does God you know what happens brother Doug she gets farther away from God you want to hide yourself in God. You, you both want to strive together to God. Uh, what I'm realizing in my life, it, it doesn't matter if we got a lot of money, if we're broke, if we don't have nothing going on. I'd rather be in the center of God's will. I'd rather have the joy of the Lord. Uh, I'd rather have the peace of God than any amount of money. What I feel in my soul, uh, I'd rather be in the will of God uh, with the peace of God uh, and the power of God uh, than have the nicest car uh, or have the the biggest house huh? or have the prettiest girl in the world huh? I'd rather serve God with the peace of God in my life walk the will of God for my life Jonah said I, I don't want God's will for my life you know what's going to happen you're going to wreck your life you know how many divorces are happening today you know why because whew, she looks good whoa let me ask you this. What's she going to do a few months later when she wants to go party with her friends, have a good time? Yeah. You trying to serve God. Yeah. Yeah. You know what Jonah said? God, I don't want your will. God, I want my will. I'll say this, ladies and gentlemen, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Yeah. Lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Proverbs 4, 14, 12 said, There is a way which seemeth right unto the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 16, verse 29, A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. I say this morning, there's a lot of people here probably with a lot of scars because they chose their will instead of God's will. And can I say, you can fake it all you want to. You know you're miserable on the inside. They preacher, that boy, that girl, they're gone. Oh, I loved them. They didn't. That's God's way of getting them out of your life. So you can have the peace of God. And then, man, I'll tell you, there's nothing like the peace of God. I was miserable driving to Asheville every morning. Preacher, 4.30, that alarm go off. I'd get in that truck, but I was miserable. Man, I was just, mm, just mad. Come home, I was a little grumpy. Say amen, tell I was just, you know what? I was miserable. I wasn't doing what God wants me to do. Now I get in that truck, I don't even have to have a Red Bull. Sugar free, say amen. I don't have to have no Red Bull. You know why? I'm just a driving. I'm just a smiling, knowing I get to go to work, knowing the peace of God to my heart. There is nothing like doing the will of God. Jonah said I don't want your will I want my will not only would Jonah had a word Jonah had a will Jonah was wrong Jonah was wrong look there at the end of verse number 3 so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with him into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord I want to say this right here if it goes against God 
God's word, if it goes against God, if that boy is going to drive you away from God, if that girl is going to drive you away from God, it's wrong. I don't care how pretty she is. I don't care. My wife, I told a, told a boy the other day, man, he, he was working out. I said, man, you gotta, man you're strong. I, I got a six-pack or two of rolls. Somebody help me out right there. My wife's got a big old boy with a six-pack. Say amen. But I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is, uh, you can choose the way you want to go. Now, hear me, but you got to accept the consequence. Yeah, yeah. I'm very, very sad to say there was at least three teenage girls under my ministry there, preacher at Bessie. I'm, I'm very, very sad to say three teenage girls, brother Christian, that got pregnant under the age of 16 years old. I just watched. I sat back and watched. I preached. I was blue in the face. The very first person they called was me. I, 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 didn't, I didn't bash them. I didn't, I didn't, you shouldn't have done you you crazy you, you you shouldn't have done that you know I tried to love them tried to show them the love of God but can I say this why did we have to go through that you know why you wanted your will instead of God's will Jonah was wrong Joseph uh, Jonah was wrong I, I'll never forget we went to Pensacola Christian School College down there in Florida and I'll be honest right before I got saved brother Rocky I was wild I was wild that's what you do when you lost. Hey, amen. Especially preacher kids. Hey, amen. Jordan Christian in Sydney. Man, we walk up there at Pensacola. We're having a basketball camp. And they took us by their uh, indoor Olympic pools. And I said, wow, Brother James, this would be awesome to swim in. You couldn't do that. Because of your Christian school, you can't swim. That's all right, whatever. We'll fight on that later. Brother Sydney, I, me and my buddies, we sitting there just talking. Brother Wheeler, we just talking. I said, man, let's prop this door open. I was always the instigator. Always had the best plan. You know, I wanted my will. Brother Doug, we, we propped the back door of that open. I said, we coming back tonight. We jumping in this pool. We doing it. I'm doing it. Kids, I don't recommend doing it. Say amen. <laughs> Sydney, we got up here and this. Man, all the lights went out by 11 o'clock. And I'll never forget my teacher, Miss Heisen. Man, she was a Spanish teacher. She, she didn't like me. I don't care what mom and dad said. That lady did not like me. I was... I was mean, I guess, but she did not like me. Y'all ever have teachers that didn't just like you know that they, you, you're out, man, you're out. Man, I'm sitting there, and I told him, I said, let's go, let's go. We got our swimming trunks on. Man, we hop, hop through that back door, man. We, they had three diving boards. One was small. My buddy jumped off it. He was real quiet, like Michael Phelps. Hey, man. Got to the middle diving board. We jumped off, Brother Doug, and I, I was a daredevil. I said, I'm going up top. I'm not afraid of heights. I said, let's go. Let's do this, bad boy. I'm looking over that water, and honey, I was about to go. I, was just, I heard a door open. Oh, nice. <laughs> There's Miss Heisen standing there. Miss Kathy, I'll just say this. When my dad heard, out, heard about that, when I got home in Tabernacle Christian School, that bus pulled in, Brother Wheeler, and my dad was there, Brother Weaver. It wasn't a good time. <laughs> my will instantly got fixed by Brother Greg Phillips' will. Say amen. He, he tore me to kingdom come. But you know what? My will, it looked fun at the moment. Looked like a good time. But my will, hear me now, my will, Jeffrey's will, had a consequence. You know what I've learned about God? God's will don't have consequences. You know why some of you keep on fighting and battling and, and going through life? I mean, you're just trying to, trying to keep your head up. You know why you're doing your will? You know why you're going through consequence and storm? Maybe it's because you're doing your will and not God's will. Jonah was wrong. Galatians 6, verse number 7. I know this ain't popular, but it says this, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's, that's real popular preaching. Say amen. Colossians 3, verse number 25. But he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong for which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Number 32, verse number 23. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. You can hide from mom, 
job. You can hide from dead. You can clear your web browser. I don't care what you do. But be sure your sin will find you out. You go out here and sow sin. You go out here and plant man, sin and, and all this stuff. Nobody don't know. Mama don't know. Mom and daddy, your kids don't know nothing about it. Your wife don't know nothing about it. Your husband don't know nothing about it. God's word tells us if you go out and reap sin, you're going to you're gonna sow sin, you're going to reap sin. And you know why our generations are suffering? It's because mom and daddy sowed sin and their kids have to reap the sin. I'll be honest with you, my little boy's coming. I'm terrified of him coming into this nasty world. But guess what? Those sins daddy sowed way back then. My little boy might have to reap the sin that his daddy done. And may I say this? I don't want my little boy to reap those things. I don't want my boy to touch the things of the world. I want him to be around God. I want him to know that daddy and mama love God. That little study in the closet, that's where daddy goes to get a hold of God. Daddy ain't trying to hide nothing on the telephones. Daddy ain't trying to hide nothing on the computer. Somebody say amen. I want that little boy to know it's okay to do right. It's okay to not go the way of the world. I'd rather be in the center of God's will. Jonah said, I'm going to choose my way. May I say this? One man said this. If you don't like what you're reaping, change what you're sowing. I say that again. I found a little something on that. If you don't like what you're reaping, change what you're sowing. Kids, instead of being embarrassed, the mom and daddy checking the telephone, change what you're looking at. Somebody say amen. Change what you're sowing. One, it cost him. The Bible said right there in verse number number three, he paid the fare thereof. It controlled him, and he went down. And verse man, you'll find there in that same verse, it changed him. Right. What happened? Instead of following God, he went from the presence of the Lord. You know what happens when you do your will instead of God's will? You're unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. You come to church and you're acting like, man, your preacher, that preacher's been on my Facebook. Say amen. Maybe it's been in my life. Sin should embarrass you. Doing it, it bothers me when people can drink and party, post it on Facebook. Well, we're having the best time of our lives. You're supposed to be a child of God. You're not ashamed. That bothers me. That bothers me when you can do your will and it not bother you. Can I see this, man? When I was to do wrong now that I'm saved, man, I was to think, I know y'all don't think bad thoughts and think bad things, but man, it'll come to my mind. You know what God will do? Oh, boy, hold up now. You know what God's telling me, Peter? I'd rather you do my will than than Jeffrey's will. And can I say, if sin does not bother you, there's a problem in your heart. Somebody say amen. Sin should bother the child of God. Mama, sin should bother you. Daddy, sin should bother you. Kid, guess what? Sin all that stuff the preacher it should make you go ugh gross I'm glad you're doing that it should bother us you know what happened to Jonah it didn't bother him Psalms 106 verse number 13 and 15 they soon forgot his words they waited not for his counsel but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert and he gave them their request let me say this right here Better be very careful what you pray for. You might actually get it. Better be very careful what you pray for. How do we get rid of Jonah, preacher? How do we get rid of Jonah? There is the ability of the Lord. Verse number 4 says, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Brother Wheeler was all over it last night. I'll be honest with you, I'm very thankful for a loving God. Yeah. Thankful, full of God, full of mercy, full of love, full of grace, full of peace. I'm glad God does those things. But preacher, one thing I've seen in my life through the ministry, Brother Rocky, that God don't play games with people. Right. God don't play games. This ain't no Uno game. This ain't Monopoly. Once you pass go, you get to collect a hundred. I wish it was. Say hey, amen. Brother Weaver, God don't play no games. One thing Jonah is about to learn is he's about to learn the chastening of the Lord. Look there at the Lord's ability. Look there at the provider. But 
the Lord sent out. Y'all know these verses, Hebrews 12, verse number 5 through 11. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Notice who he's talking to, my son. Despise not the chastening of the Lord, which nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourgeth every son who receiveth. If ye endure chastening, chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is whom the father chasteneth not? But if you are without chastisement, whereof we are all partakers in, are you bastards and not sons? That's not popular. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. Greg Phillips, say amen. And we gave them reverence. I instantly said, yes, sir, say amen. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, I say amen to this verse. Now, no chastening is for the present seemeth to be joyous. When I got my tail tore up, I didn't say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for this whooping. It's a blessing from God. And I was, whoa, 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 dad, whoa, hold on, daddy, my leg's on fire. It's not joyous. It don't bring, if it brings joy, there's something wrong with your noggin. Say amen. Kids, if you like getting whooped, y'all probably don't get whoopings nowadays. I got beaten. Say amen. If you enjoy those things, and daddy and mama, if you enjoy giving them to them, there's something wrong. No, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, after what? The chastening. It yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. I wrote this down right here. God has a way of getting our attention. I've seen it over and over and over and over in my life. Miss Sydney, where God has a... A parents have a kid. They're out in the world partying it up and you know they're saved. Brother Doug, you know they're saved. And God will have to inflict pain into that mom or dad to get that kid to turn back to God. I was at Victory 10, 11 years old. Brother Weaver, I'll never forget it. There was a man by the name of David and Tina Underwood on the air-conditioned place Right there, man he, he, man, he asked God to bless him. God was blessing him so much, preacher. He got out of church. Say this, if, if, if you think your blessings of God will cause you to get away from church and the things of God, you're mistaken. Watch that family get out of church. And dad, y'all know how, man, every Sunday, dad would, man, back in the days, he'd, he'd view the people on Monday morning. Brother Weaver, y'all probably done this too. You called him. people. Hello, where you at? Missed you, love you. Hope to see you next Sunday. Next Sunday, they wouldn't come around. The Rock and my dad went and knocked on their door. They're right underneath the water tower where the Chevrolet place is. They lived in a double wide right there on the left, going up the hill. Mr. David, he, dad went to him, Brother Donald. He said, Brother David, I was with him. And back in the days, I used to ride around. I didn't know what he was doing. I, had no, I was just wanting to be with my dad. I was just hanging out and talking to people. I didn't, I didn't know what he was doing. I was just there in case they got in a fight. I was ready to go. Say amen. <laughs> Sick them, boys. Say amen. Wish you would have let me on some of them. Say amen. <laughs> I remember my dad talking to me. He said, this is what my dad told Brother David. Big man. Big, big, big man. He said, Brother David, he said, if you don't get your life right with God, God's going to take you out. I don't believe my dad, I believe dad said that because he got a word from God. Yeah. Mr. David didn't pay that no attention. Mr. David said, I want my will. Then a couple of weeks, Brother Rocky had a funeral. That big old man laid right in front of the casket. Yeah. Laying there. Two weeks later, Dad got a phone call. Miss Tina, man, she had that big old puffy blonde hair. I want my will, preacher. Your will don't matter. We laid his wife to rest. And then two weeks. DJ and BJ was her sons. Brother, Brother Doug, I watched their family. Instead of God using that to turn them, them boys around, get their family right, they got sour on God. I say this, kids, better be real careful what you do. Kids, you better be very careful what you listen to, who you hang out with, who you date. 
Because you don't want to inflict, inflict pain on mom. I'm not saying God's going to do that. I'm not saying one thing I have learned. God has a crazy way of getting our attention. Oh, yeah. Mama, better be very careful getting out of God's will. Right. Amen. Mom, well, preacher, I want my, I'm just going to miss a few, preacher, it's fine. I'm just going to do, I'm tired. I'm going to do my will today, preacher. It's Sunday. It's my day off. Preacher, I'm going to do my will. Dad, well, you know, preacher won't mind. We just stay out once. No big deal. It's okay. Well, my will. God forbid. What if God had to come through those kids to get your attention? Amen. God forbid, uh, preacher, God forbid something happened to little Carter when he gets here. Because daddy is so stubborn that he will not listen to God. Preach, I want to do what I want to do. I'm young. I got the rest. You do what you want to do. If, if you are saved, God's going to get you. Listen, I know this is what God has birthed in my heart this morning. We got to get rid of Jonah. Got to get rid of Jonah, the ability of the Lord. It's amazing that God got them at the sea. Deuteronomy 4 verse 24 For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire Even a jealous God There's the punishment He sent out a great wind Notice this right here Let me show you this Look verse number 4 But the Lord sent out a great wind into Not a sea It's amazing God knows exactly where we are Son God showed me this this morning I woke up early Started typing getting on it You know what brother Peter You know what God showed me there God knows you're the Yeah Mom and daddy may not know where your the or the, I don't know how y'all say it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Mom and daddy may not know where your the is. God does. God may not know that the on the telephone. Mom and daddy may not know what the the is on the phone you're looking at. And you know you shouldn't be hanging out with that dude. And you know you shouldn't be with that girl. But can I say mom and daddy may not know? But boys, God knows where that the is in your life. The sad reality is, Miss Annette, is God will deal with the thee. Yeah, right. Notice God didn't, God didn't come to them out of their comfort zone. God came to what they're very comfortable with. Yeah. God got their attention from where out of their comfort zone. I wonder if God wants to deal with our comfort zone. What if our family's our comfort zone? What if God's going to have to deal with your thee to get your attention? I wish I had something happy, I really do, but I'm telling you, God's saying something this morning. What if God, sir, is going to have to deal with your thee? It's my will. My family's going to do this. You can. Go ahead. But if you're saved, if, if you're saved, God's going to deal with your thee. God's going to deal with them in the sea. There's the punishment, there's the payment. So that the ship was like to be broken. One man said this sometimes God. We we'll have to let things come in our lives to break us, to get us on the right path. There's the ability of the Lord. There's the awareness of the mariners. I'm almost done. They were there was fear. Don't you notice this now? The mariners were not out of the will of God. Hear me, hear me. You hear me? The mariners were not out of the will of God. Jonah was. Yeah. See what that lets me know, preacher. When we get out of the will of God. There's people who are going to suffer that should have never... There's mamas and daddies today. They're having to suffer the wrath of God because a kid's so hard-headed. There's a kid who's trying to live for God, trying to come to church. I, I watch these young boys, man, one of them go... They all start hugging each other and slapping each other on the... You know what adults seem to learn from that? I just watch them. Y'all boys, y'all keep on doing that, man. Keep on loving each other, being with each other. But you know what? There's many kids out there trying to serve God, preacher. And now those kids are suffering and having to go through things because mom and dad get out of the will of God. I'll say this. The devil's made it real easy to get out of the will of God. It's so easy to miss church. I'm sick. I'm tired. Who's not? Your pastor's probably sick and tired. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's people going to suffer. The, the mariners were not out of the will of God. 
But you know what? They suffered the consequence of one man's decision. Let me ask you this. Who's going to suffer in your family because you're out of the will of God? Preacher, I wonder, is, is Jeffrey and Greta and Holly going to have to suffer because Brother Greg's out of the will of God? Say, preacher, it's not a big decision. It's okay. I can do it. There's a big decision. There's a price to pay. Son, I don't, I don't know who's getting this, but somebody's getting it. Somebody's taking it in. Don't get out of the will of God. Mariners were suffering. They were, they, man, notice these men now were to suffer fear. They were afraid. These men were now losing furnishings. They are losing things. Man, the ship has is, is come. Man, Brother Zach, they're tossing things. Those wares, the Bible says, they're tossing things. Can I say this? Some people will lose things in life you never should have lost because of getting out of the will of God. Say, so, preacher, what is that? Your joy. The peace of God. Some of you right now, you're, you're so miserable. Son, I'm telling you, I feel like I'm in the right this morning. I'm telling you, I feel it. Some of you are so miserable. You come in, you're, you're, you can't smile. You're so unhappy. You're so defeated. You know why? You know you're out of the will of God. I'll be honest with you. The, the other Thursday, man, God, I don't know. I just, I feel like a cheerleader going, if I could jump, do jumping jacks, do a split, I probably would. But my big old rear end can't do those things. Uh, man, the peace I feel in my heart. Uh, having the joy in my heart man the happiness in my heart man I was just snappy all the time just miserable all of a sudden it's like a big old cloud from glory just came and hopped in my soul I do know what it's like to not be in the will of God I know what it's like to not feel the peace of God I know what it's come like to feel come to church and be miserable I don't want to come to church and be miserable I don't want to come and be in the molly grubs like he or somebody say amen I want to coming here about bouncing like old E. D. Dog Tigger boy just excited about the things of God uh, some of you this morning the devil's done stole your joy he's done stole your smile you are miserable on the inside uh, boy do I got good news for you uh, there's a God that still loves you uh, there's a God with wide open arms uh, honey he'll take you back in uh, you can get back in the center of God's will this morning <laughs> Miss, miss, you come, play the piano, please, whatever God puts on your heart. There's the awareness of the mariner. mariners. They knew something wasn't right. I say this, everybody around you knows there's something not right. You know why, preacher? Because Jonah didn't have no emotion. You know why? Because of the minutes of Jonah, Jonah has become numb. The boats are rocking. People are screaming, probably like a bunch of girls. We're going down! We're going down! We're going to die! No, Jonah just sitting over there asleep. <laughs> Singing rock of baby. Just asleep. You know why you can't enjoy God? You become numb to the things of God because you and God only know you're out of the will of God. But Sydney, I don't want to get so numb that I can't feel the presence of God. I don't want to go without God's hand upon my life. I don't know about you, but I've been in those times where I've been numb. Hadn't felt the presence of God. But there's nothing like getting in that little Ford F-150 every morning. Man, the glory of God shows up in there about 5 o'clock. I didn't even know Jesus was up that early. Say amen. But I'm telling you, there's nothing like the presence of God. There's nothing like getting in there and praying and talking to God. I want to be around the presence of God. I want to have the power of God. I want to have the peace of God. I want to get up there with the eagles and fly around. I want to smile. I want to have joy in my heart. What causes that? Being in the center of God's will. I don't want to become numb to the things of God. Kids, you don't want to become too numb to the things of God. Some of you right now wish you could hear from God. But you can't. Because you're numb. He was numb. Jonah had a need. Jonah had to be neglected. I want you to watch verse number 15 and I'm done. Look at verse number 15. It's this key now. So they took up Jonah. 
Notice, notice. Jonah wasn't just going to jump out by himself. Preacher Jonah wasn't just going to get up and jump out and say, Here I come, let me get rid of you. You know what? Somebody had to deal with Jonah. I come all this, man, I've had a good time this week. God spoke to my heart this morning, last night. Somebody, mom, dad, those friends, you know, you shouldn't be hanging around with. You need to get rid of Jonah. Yeah. Good. Young lady, young man, that girl, that boy you're with, those friends you're hanging around with, you better get rid of Jonah. Jonah ain't just going to jump out. There's a lot of people this morning with regrets. Miss Kathy, they wish. They'd have got rid of Jonah. Church, can I tell you what you need to do? Feel the peace. Some of you can't even smile this morning. It's miserable. You waiting on me to shut up. Well, guess what? It's about to happen. You're so miserable. You try to fill that peace with everything else but God. There is nothing like the peace of God. I don't know who you are this morning. We're standing... But you need to get rid of Jonah. Young lady, let that boy go. Young man, let that girl go. Mom, dad, you need to cut those Jonas out of your life. You're going to suffer. Father, we love you. But we've delivered the word you placed in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.